I'm Katie from What Katie Did and today I'm going to be talking about fabrics and the fabrics we use for our lingerie and alternatives we're currently looking at. A couple of months ago I was at our factory in India and um, I've recently introduced my friend to the same factory and she makes vintage inspired clothing and they had all the fabrics she selected which were available in India and which were made in India and the prints were absolutely amazing and I, I was I was just so jealous. Um, the, the challenges we have with making lingerie is it's, it's okay to, you can find a lot of amazing prints but the prints are often quite big so I need to, I need to find little prints to fit on a bra whereas you can find um, amazing prints to go on French knickers or loungewear they need to be tiny tiny to get to fit on a bra and that was that was the first challenge and we did look we did look far and wide for the perfect print and in the end we ran out of time but a couple of weeks ago I found these now these are vintage French knickers and they're made from cotton they're very, very similar to our CC09 French knickers. And when I bought them, they were totally, totally scrunched up. They looked like a dishcloth. And I ironed them and now they've been folded up and they've been in my suitcase because I'm traveling at the moment. And this is how they look after they've been folding in the suitcase. So they're still perfectly wearable. But the, the issue with using a cotton or rayon is you would have to iron your underwear. And I was having a chat with our model Velvet Jones a few days ago about this, and she was like, no, I would not iron my underwear. And we were chatting about our ironing habits, and it's quite interesting how generations change, because a few months ago, I borrowed some bed sheets from my mum, and I washed them and gave them back to her, and she was like, you haven't ironed them. And I was like, no, mum, I can't. I've got a life, a business, a family. I don't have time to iron my bed sheets. I'm sorry. And me and Velvet were talking about, and we were saying that, you know, we've got items in our wardrobe which we don't wear as much as we should or we could because they need to be ironed and they need to, need to be made to be look respectable and everything. And with, with, if we made French knickers or tamp pants in cotton or rayon, would you, would you have time to iron with them? Would would that stop you buying them? Um, it, uh, I've always wanted to do them and it would be nice and cool in the summer. From an ecological point of view, we are looking a lot into sustainability this year at what Katie did. And although cotton is a natural fabric and is comfortable to wear in hot weather, it's not necessarily more sustainable than man-made fibres because the actual the, the dyeing process of cotton and, and in addition silk is highly polluting. So it's not as easy as saying, well, it's biodegradable and everything, so that, that's all good. There's there's a lot more behind the scenes that we need to look at. So the main the main issue is would you want to wear a natural a cotton fabric to be more comfortable in summer. The, the second um, issue we, we possibly could have is that we did, in the very, very early days, we did used to make our bullet bras out of cotton and it was a very, quite a firm cotton. So um, with French knickers, the French knickers would have to be made out of a lighter weight cotton or rayon, which means that we might need to line the cotton bra in a lingerie net, which would be a man-made nylon. So it's even if we did a cotton bra for, for structure, it might have to be lined in a man-made fibre, which which might defeat the object of doing you know, a, natu a natural cotton range. So anyway, if you could please let me know what you think and if you've got any ideas, please let me know. Uh, so the, qu the question is, would you, would you iron your underwear? Because really this, if it, when you wash it, it really has to be ironed. And uh, as Velvet pointed out, well, you could put it in the tumble dryer. And I'm like, no, 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 we, don't, we can't recommend putting lingerie in the, um, in the, in the tumble dryer because that's, that's a no-no what Katie did. But, and also tumble dryers aren't ecologically friendly either. So if we did cotton or rayon underwear, you would have to iron it. And would you be prepared to iron it? And would that put you off? buying it um, and put you off wearing it on a regular basis. So that, that's the first part of this film. The second part of this video is about silk and we do get asked, asked occasionally why, do, why we don't make silk lingerie and there's, there's, two, there's two answers to this. Well actually there's, there's three. The first one is um, I've been vegan on and off since I was 14 and although I've wavered in the past between wearing silk and wearing wool, now, now I'm not wearing 
any of it and um, so that that puts me off making making silk lingerie for what Katie did uh, I was speaking to um, our factory owner in India uh, a few months ago and it's it's quite interesting because he where we were based where our factory was a couple of years ago we were in between spaces and we were actually had the factory on his um, mother-in-law's organic farm and we had a building and a farm and it was absolutely amazing because you could walk out and there were all the organic fruit and veggies and and it was just an amazing place to be um, but he used to the family used to um, grow silk grow silk there so they had the mulberry trees and they had the silkworms and he said that they stopped doing it 20 30 years ago because the Chinese silk came in and the the way they they grew the well they grew the silk and produ produced the silk grew is the wrong word but the way they produced the silk the Chinese had a much higher yield than the Indians for whatever reason and it really pushed the price down so it wasn't economically vi viable for his family to to farm silk anymore um, and we did, we did talk about the silkworm situation because to get silk out you have to um, basically boil the silkworms alive which isn't, which isn't nice and, and as, the, as the gun factory said well you know when they, when, they, when they hatch they only live for a day anyway so really it's not I mean how, how much life does a silkworm have anyway and that's, that's a completely different question but he also said that with raw silk and peace silk because peace silk is where is when the silkworm isn't killed the, the silkworm comes out of the cocoon and this means that the yield is lower because the the silkworm makes a little hole to come out of so he he, he was saying well, is it worth the additional cost for a silkworm to live an extra day when the silkworm doesn't really know what's going anywhere going on anyway so that's that's one issue is the cruelty aspect of silk and whether whether it is cruel or whether it is environmentally friendly at all and there is one designer in London who won't actually use silk not because of the the animal issue but because it is more he says it's more polluting than dyeing poly polyester and the dyeing of fabrics is is a big issue with with making clothing and dyeing clothing is it's in in India where we work um, all our dyeing is done in Kerala in the deep south of India and it's very heavily controlled but I, I don't really know about other countries because my knowledge is just about the UK and India where we manufacture and thirdly I just want to touch a little bit on import duties and tariffs because this is hot in the press in the US at the moment because um, the Trump administration is charging more for import duty from items from China and um, it all seems fair at the beginning but what people don't realize is that um, by putting up the tariffs in for importing into the US from China it's actually hitting the little guys for example China is actually a, a very no, I was going to say very expensive but it's a lot more expensive to manufacture there than it used to be and now a lot of people have moved to cheaper places and when I say a lot of people I mean the big brands the big brands have moved from China to Bangladesh to Vietnam to to cheaper countries to manufacture so when when President Trump puts um, import duty on items coming from China he's he's hitting the small manufacturers and I was reading in the Twitter feed from um, a colleague of mine who works in the lingerie, lingerie industry Dottie's Delights she makes she makes all her lingerie by hand and she most of her fabric comes from China and she's been being hit by these new tariff rates from her suppliers and meanwhile meanwhile the big companies they're not even making in China anymore they're, they'll be making in Bangladesh or somewhere like that which is a lot cheaper now the fabric and the components will still be coming from China but they'll be going to Bangladesh which means that they won't be um, import duty won't be charged when it goes into, into the US and this this is quite a big issue because uh, a few years ago, there, there was a, in the lingerie industry, there, there were many cases where lingerie was actually made in France, and because they Morocco, which is in, Af in Northern Africa, because Morocco had a free trade deal between Morocco and America, there are instances where lingerie made in France was actually being shipped to Morocco, being relabeled and then shipped to America because they didn't have to pay the import duty. And this is how, how big the import duty and tariffs 
affect things like you would have thought lingerie made in, in France would have been highly prestigious and it would have been worth more than having a made in Morocco label but no no it was better to actually relabel it and say that it was made in Morocco in, instead of France so you didn't have to pay the import duty and tariffs. At what Katie did we are looking um, very seriously into sustainability this year and and it's very it's very interesting the way the way things are going to at the first glance it looks it looks very very easy and you you buy a biodegradable plastic bag or something made out of corn and it biodegrades and when you look at it more closely it there's a lot more to it than that and i know a couple of members of our team are speaking to people who supply components to us and supply packaging to us and I'm sending them back to ask again because the, the, first, the first answer is always, oh yes, it's totally biodegradable. And it turns out that yes, if you have the right recycling plant, of which there are like, for example, two in the UK, then yes, you can biodegrade, it is biodegradable. And you know, if you put it in your normal compost or your normal recycling, then, then no, that's not gonna happen. So we are, we are being very, very careful moving forward to make sure that if something you know, if it, it does actually have to biodegrade under normal circumstances. And later this year, we are actually launching um, our first lingerie range, which is made of recycled fabrics. But it is, it is something we are moving very slowly and surely. And we continue to ask questions about why and wherefore. And this is, and I, import, I think it's important for all of us not to take things at face value and, and to ask questions about why and how things are made. Um, at the moment, no easy answer really really it's a case of buying less and buying the best quality you can afford and uh, keep repairing stuff looking after stuff so if you get a, if you get a hole in your nylons you know you have to be prepared to sew it up and fix it so you can keep wearing them and that's that's the most thrifty and ethical thing you can do so if you do have any questions especially about whether you're willing to iron your lingerie please let me know and I'll catch up with you soon so take care